In this tutorial, we'll take a look at this first tab here with the params um, components. So this is the params um, tab and all the different components that exist in these different groups. Um, the first one is the geometry. So we've already looked at a point, so you can just drop a point in here and contain that point from um, Rhino. But you can also contain other kinds of geometry. So for example, curve, if I'm in Rhino and I draw a curve and I um, drop the curve component in here. Um, the same way that I, I contain the point object, I can contain a curve. So I can right click on curve, set one point, and set that curve. You can also contain other geometry like planes, or rectangles, or lines, um, or um, frequent one is uh, the surface, and meshes and B-reps. So um, in general, um, if you have a mesh, which would be a polygon object, maybe brought in from another program into Rhino, if you're containing that into Grasshopper, like an object you might make in 3ds Max, for example, you would bring that in as a mesh. And then if you have a surface object, this would be a UV surface object. So for example, if I had um, over here in Rhino, uh, I'll just copy this curve vertically. If I had a loft between these two geometries, um, that would be a surface that I can bring in. Oops. So, um, by the way, you can either go to the menu and select the component that you want to use, or you can double click and type in that component. And as you type, you can see the different components that include that word will show up. So, that's a very quick way to work once you're more familiar with Grasshopper. Um, so, in this case, I can just type in surface, select surface, and that's the same component as that. Uh, there's no difference, just different ways of accessing it. So if I right click and I set one surface, I can set that surface there. You'll notice when I'm setting these objects, there's set one, but there's also set multiple. So for example, if I go over here and I make a bunch of points in, in Rhino, um, I can set all of these points within one component object. So if I type in point over here, right click and set multiple points, I can then store all of those points within um, Rhino. So for example, if I do a line SDL, which we'll talk about later, that's a start direction length, I could start um, lines at each of those points, give it a direction like Z, um, which is a vector, and then I could give it a length like a slider, I'll do 1 through 50.00, plug that into L for length, and you can see it'll then use each of those points and run those um, commands that are embedded within that component on every one of those point objects. So that's the advantage of using a point or a container to contain multiple objects within that one component. Um, also under geometry you have objects like B-reps, so that's a boundary, boundary representation. So if I have something like a box, for example, um, I can contain that into a B-rep. So there are different kind of containers for different kinds of objects that you might produce in Rhino. And then later on we'll get into how to construct these all within the Grasshopper environment. But I just want to present that with you. So curve, surface, B-rep, point. And then the final one that um, is pretty useful is just geometry. And this can contain any kind of geometry. The reason you'd want to choose um, a specific component for a specific kind of geometry is that once you get into more complex commands like for example division um, or any of these kind of other uh, components they're looking in their output for very specific inputs or in their input for very specific outputs and so not all of these outputs will work with all of these inputs and so you'll have to start to figure out which kind of geometry is the component looking for and then you'll have to create that kind of geometry for it to work within that component for example a surface will not work in this component actually will it will in that one um, but a b-rep won't and when it won't work it'll give you this red um, display which basically tells you that the data conversion failed. So it's looking for a curve. Uh, it just so happened to be able to subdivide the surface into curves, which is another matter. But um, it just goes, uh, it's important to know that the kind of components you're plugging in from an output to an input does matter. And so you, if, if you plug in the wrong component, you're going to get an error that shows up.